First thing I want to do is I want to talk one more time through the structure that we talked about on Monday. And that is the structural element of a control structure, specifically a branching control structure. In this case, we're using an if statement. It is not the only way to branch, but it is by far the most common. If statements are everywhere, so you better get used to seeing the syntax. Now, you remember an if statement starts with the keyword if, and then is followed by an expression. The expression can be, but is not required to be inside parentheses. Remember, that's something that I tend to do. It is not required. Some people would say it's redundant. I like it because it puts a visual marker around the expression. Right now, the expression is something that will evaluate to true or false. Most things, in fact, that you would put there probably will evaluate to true. Because if I just put a variable or a number, or if I write a string in there, those all evaluate to true, which is interesting. Um, but if, if this is true, whatever I put here, then it's going to execute whatever's in the code block beneath it. Now, at the end of the line, you have to have a colon, not a semicolon, but a colon, two dots. And the lines beneath that that get executed if that is true are indented. So this entire code block, whether it's one line or a million lines, has to be indented. They all have to be indented the same amount. For that reason, I use the tab character, not a space character. A lot of people, for whatever reason, decide they're going to use spaces. And they're like one, two, three, four, five, edit every line. But the minute you have a line in this code block that's indented four spaces or six spaces by accident, you get a weird error. And sometimes those errors are the hardest to find because visually the difference between four spaces and five spaces and six spaces might not be apparent if you're scrolling through a lot of code, like trying to find where the error is at. It's tough. So I use the tab. One tab comes all the way over this about five spaces typically. But if I hit tab twice by accident, I immediately know because it, it visually it looks a lot different. So I recommend a tab. You can do what you want. It's a free country, at least for now. But you can do what you want. I recommend tab. Okay, so you must have at least one indented line beneath the if statement. If you don't, it will give you an error. Now, logically, maybe, maybe if you're thinking about it, it should seem like, oh, well, if I don't want anything to happen yet, or if I just haven't put that part of the code yet, it shouldn't throw an error. Python does not like it when you don't have something indented underneath the if statement. Now, if you want to test your code and you've got an if statement without anything underneath it, there is a word, a keyword that you can use for that. It's called pass, P-A-S-S. -S. If you put pass right here, whether it's true or not, it will do nothing. It'll, it's just like uh, playing a pass card if you're like playing a card game where it skips your turn or whatever. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. So you can use the, the pass keyword here if you if you want, just to keep it from erroring out. But typically you want to have something here that's meaningful, something that it does if that is true. And so our assignment for this week is going to build on what we did in the sandbox with the number guessing game. And it's going to take it a little step further. But before we do that, I want to um, I want to go a little bit deeper and, and review if, elif, and else. Now, we follow the same structure where we have the statement and an expression that if it's true, this block of code gets executed. If not, it will check this expression, the elif. If this is true, then this block will get executed. If that's not true in this statement, then it will go down and it'll look for an else. Else says, if nothing else has been true, then do this thing. You cannot have anything with a colon at the end of it without an indented line under it. Okay. What's more is 
every elif requires an if. Okay, you, if you have an elif, you must have an if. However, you do not have to have an else. You never have to have an else. Else is completely optional. Furthermore, you can have as many elifs as you want. So you always have to have an if. You, have, you can have one or more elifs, and you can have zero or one else. That's the pattern. But every branch needs to have its own code block that you can execute. One more rule that you need to be aware of, you need to keep in mind, is that in this branch, once it finds something that's true, for example, if I had 100 elifs, and it gets down to like the third one, and it finds something that's true, it will skip everything else in that branch. So once it, if you think of it like a, a fork in the road, right? You got a fork in the road, you got if, you got elif, you got else. Once you choose a road to go down, all other roads become closed to you. So one of these roads, is going to be chosen. Now, if I don't have an else, basically what that means is I don't have to choose any of the roads. Because if I don't have an else, this could be false, this could be false, and if I don't have an else, it just does nothing. It'll just carry on at the next unindented line below this, which is whatever's next in the program. So there's a lot of options, and a lot of options mean you can do a lot of different things. You can be very creative. But the other thing a lot of options means is that there's a lot of opportunities for you to confuse yourself. So you wanna be very logical, very methodical. One more thing, this is a recommendation, a good programming practice, but not the law. So it's file it under, it's a free country, I can do it if I want to, just like putting spaces. I don't recommend it. But if you have an if, elif, else, or an if, elif, you want to think about the logic because you don't want to set up a program where more than one thing could be true. If this is true, everything else beneath it should be unable to be true. If this is true, then this should not be able to be true logically. So you don't want a, a program that says if X equals five here and if LF y equals five here, because technically speaking, x could equal five and y could equal five, in which case you would have unpredictable results here. Does that make sense? So it will become clearer as you code, but at some point in the future, if you're not fully grasping that, what will probably happen is you'll be coding along, maybe like run your code and you have a weird, unpredictable response. And you'd be like, oh, right. Mosley talked about that in class. And he said I would forget until just now. And then you would remember. It'd be like, it will all come together. It'll be amazing.